Hi, I'm Jessica. Before we dive into my story, please hit like and subscribe for more real-life tales just like this one. Now, let's get into it. Living in a small town means everyone knows your story, or at least they think they do. For my husband David and I, our struggle with infertility wasn't just a private sorrow. It was a quiet echo in every, how are you, we received at the grocery store. David, bless his heart, kept a brave face, always squeezing my hand a little tighter whenever the topic came up. Last March, just as spring began to whisper through the cold, David had to leave for a business trip. There's a big storm coming through the area I'll be in, so I might not be able to call as often, he said, packing his suitcase. I'll miss you, I murmured, trying not to think about the empty house that would be even quieter without him. Stay safe, okay? I always do. And hey, it's only for a week. Time will fly, he reassured me, giving me a peck on the forehead before he headed out, his figure soon swallowed by the misty morning. Three days into his trip, I was returning from that same grocery store, the one where the cashiers knew not just your name, but your whole life's tale, when I saw her. A little girl, no more than six, huddled by the dumpsters, her small frame shaking with sobs. Her name was Emma. Hey, sweetie, are you okay? Where are your parents? I asked, kneeling beside her, keeping my voice soft, trying not to spook her. She looked up, her eyes wide and frightened, cheeks streaked with tears. I don't know where my mommy is, she whimpered her voice barely a whisper. My heart twisted at the sight. Without a second thought, I took off my coat, wrapped it around her tiny shoulders, and led her to my car. Let's get you somewhere warm, okay? I'll help you find your mommy. Once we arrived at home, I fixed her a warm meal, something simple and comforting. As she ate quietly, I noticed how her eyes would occasionally dart up to meet mine, a mix of gratitude and wariness in them. After she finished eating, I dialed the police. I found a young girl about six years old, near the local grocery store. She seems lost and scared, I explained, watching Emma play with a spoon, tracing patterns on the table. The officer on the other end was kind, but not very hopeful. We'll send someone over to take a statement, and see if we can match her with any reports. It's possible her family hasn't even realized she's missing yet, or they might not be from around here. While we waited for the police, I showed Emma around the house trying to make her feel at ease. She clung to my hand as we walked from room to room, her small grip tightening whenever I showed her something new. Do you like the house? I asked as we finished our short tour in the living room. It's nice, she whispered, her voice still laced with uncertainty. Are you and your husband going to take care of me? I knelt down so I was eye level with her. We'll make sure you're safe, Emma. You can stay here until we find your mom. The police arrived shortly after, and I watched Emma shrink a little with each question they asked. They were gentle, but the uniform can be intimidating to anyone, let alone a child her age. After taking our statements and promising to keep us updated, they left us with a few contact numbers and instructions on what to do next. In the days that followed, Emma slowly began to open up. We spent hours coloring, playing games, and reading stories. Her laughter, a sound so rare at first, began to fill the house more frequently. It was during one of our many story times, her head resting against my shoulder, that I realized how much she had begun to mean to me. She wasn't just a child I had found. She was becoming a part of my life, filling a void I hadn't even fully acknowledged. Every day with Emma brought a new joy, a new discovery, and a deepening bond that felt both terrifying and wonderful. She needed me, but maybe I needed her just as much, if not more. As the week neared its end, and David's return loomed on the horizon. I found myself both eager and anxious to see how he would fit into this unexpected new arrangement that had brought so much light into my previously quiet world. When David finally walked through the door after his week-long absence, the relief of having him back clashed sharply with my nervousness about how he'd react to Emma. As he dropped his bags and turned to greet me, his eyes instantly caught on the little figure curled up on the couch, absorbed in a picture book. Jessica, who's this? David's voice was a mix of surprise and confusion. Taking a deep breath, I led him into the kitchen so we could talk while Emma continued reading, unaware of the crucial conversation about to unfold. Her name's Emma. I found her alone and scared outside the grocery store right after you left, I began, recounting the entire story from discovery to the police involvement.
David listened intently, his brow furrowing with concern. Jess, are you sure this was the right thing to do? What about her parents? What about the legal side of this? I nodded, understanding his concerns. I know, it's complicated, but she needed help, David. I couldn't just leave her there. The police haven't found any leads on her family yet. He rubbed his neck, clearly torn. And you've become attached to her, haven't you? Looking back toward the living room, where Emma was quietly turning pages, I admitted, Yes, I have. She's... She's brought so much light into our home, David. We both watched her for a moment, her small presence filling our home in a way that neither of us had anticipated. Finally, David sighed, a gentle smile breaking through his initial reservations. She does seem very sweet, and I can see she loves you too. What do you think we should do? I took his hand, feeling the familiar warmth of his support. Maybe we could foster her, at least until they find her family, give her a stable place to stay. David nodded slowly, the decision weighing on him, but his eyes were kind. Let's do it. It's the right thing to do, and we'll figure it out together. Relief washed over me, mingled with a warmth that only David's agreement could bring. Together, we approached Emma, kneeling beside her to explain what was happening. Emma, would you like to stay with us for a little while? David asked, his voice soft. Emma's eyes lit up, and she nodded vigorously, a small smile spreading across her face. Yes, please. As we all shared a quiet dinner that night, the decision to foster Emma felt like the first step towards something incredibly meaningful. David's initial shock had given way to a thoughtful acceptance, and as he talked and laughed with Emma, I knew that our little family was beginning to change and grow in ways we never expected. As days turned into weeks with Emma in our lives, David and I found ourselves navigating the complexities of the foster system. We met regularly with social services, who were just as perplexed as we were about the lack of any claims or leads on Emma's biological family. Each meeting concluded with more questions than answers, but one thing became increasingly clear. Emma needed stability, love, and a sense of permanence. One chilly evening, after another inconclusive visit from our social worker, David and I sat down for a long discussion. We were in the living room, Emma already asleep, after a day filled with laughter and games. Jessica, what are we really doing here? David began, his voice tinged with a mix of frustration and concern. It's like we're in limbo, not knowing when or if they'll find her family. I nodded, feeling the weight of uncertainty. I know, it's hard. But when I look at her, when I see how she's come out of her shell with us, I can't help but feel like we're doing the right thing. David reached for my hand, his touch grounding. Maybe it's time we consider making it official, adopting Emma. She already feels like our daughter, Jessica. Tears welled up in my eyes as I met his gaze. Really? You think so? Yeah, I do, he replied, squeezing my hand. Let's give her the family she deserves, the family we've always wanted to be. The decision to adopt Emma felt like a natural step, yet it was laden with profound emotional implications. We embarked on the adoption process with determination, each paperwork filled, and each legal hurdle crossed bringing us closer not just to solidifying our relationship with Emma, but also to each other. Our shared commitment to her well-being reinforced our bond, our shared values stronger and more evident than ever. As the months rolled by, our little home blossomed with new life and new routines. School runs, parent-teacher meetings, and weekend trips to the park became our new normal. Emma's laughter filled our days, and her curious little questions about the world around her sparked conversations between David and me that went deep into the night. The process of adopting Emma was not without its challenges, but each step confirmed our resolve. When the final papers came through, and it was official, the three of us celebrated with a small party at home. Just us, a cake, and balloons. But it felt like the grandest celebration. Emma hugged both of us tightly, her voice muffled against my chest. Thank you for being my mommy and daddy. David and I exchanged a look over her head, a silent acknowledgement of the journey we'd been on. This was our new future, one we had chosen together. Our family was complete, not by blood, but by love. A love that was chosen, treasured, and fiercely protected. The legal adoption process was both daunting and exhilarating. David and I attended countless meetings, filled out endless forms, 
and underwent home inspections that scrutinized every corner of our lives. Each step was a hurdle, but with each one cleared, we felt a mounting excitement, a palpable sense of nearing the finish line to officially calling Emma our daughter. Throughout the process, there were moments of doubt and anxiety. The fear of unforeseen complications loomed large, reminding us of the fragile thread on which this new beginning balanced. However, each time we looked at Emma Wonky, who remained blissfully unaware of the legal intricacies, we found new strength. Her easy smiles and the trusting way she slipped her little hand into ours dispelled the shadows of uncertainty. When the adoption was finally approved, it was less of a legal conclusion and more of a celebration of a journey that had transformed us deeply. Our home, once quiet and tinged with the sadness of unfulfilled dreams, now echoed with the vibrant energy of a child's laughter and the colorful disarray of toys and art supplies that marked Emma's presence in every room. The changes weren't just physical. Emma's presence had seeped into the very essence of our lives, altering routines, reshaping priorities, and redefining our understanding of family. Saturday mornings were no longer slow starts, but exciting ventures to the park or playful pancake-making sessions. Evenings were for story time and discussions about stars, dreams, and everything in between. Reflecting on this unexpected journey, I often found myself marveling at the serendipity of it all. The way Emma had come into our lives, a beacon of hope when we least expected it, seemed nothing short of miraculous. She not only filled our home with joy, but also healed old wounds, making us whole in a way neither David nor I had anticipated. It's strange, isn't it? I said to David one evening as we watched Emma sleep, her chest rising and falling in peaceful slumber. How something so unexpected can become the most defining part of your life. David nodded, his eyes soft with affection. It's the best kind of strange, though. I can't imagine our lives without her now. As I wrote in my journal later that night, a practice I had taken up to document our journey, I penned down thoughts of gratitude and hope. Emma had taught us that family isn't just created through birth, but forged through love, resilience, and sometimes through the simple act of opening your door to someone in need. Our family was no longer just a unit of two, but a vibrant trio, each of us essential to the harmony of the whole. This journey of adoption had not just given Emma a home, but had gifted us with the realization that sometimes, the best families are the ones you make. That brings us to the end of our story. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you believe that family is defined more by biological ties? Or can the bonds formed by choice be just as strong, if not stronger? Drop your opinions and stories in the comments below. And if you found this story moving, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more heartfelt stories like this one. Your support helps us bring more such narratives to light.